Dorothy, we're not kids in Sunday school anymore. I woke up this morning and the Lord would not let me let this go. Not for anything. So I'm sharing it with you. Praise God. So we serve a God of balance. Deuteronomy 32, 35. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. The day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them make haste. We serve a God of balance. Proverbs 11, 1. A false balance is abomination to the Lord. But a just weight is his delight. A just weight and a balance are the Lord's. Proverbs 16, 11. But all the weights of the bag are his work. So your enemy's firing arrows at you. Evil arrows, right? And you're firing nothing. Oh, that's out of balance. That's not a balance. Your enemy's shooting a gun at you and you have a BB gun. Also out of balance. Unjust balance. Your enemy is shooting an automatic weapon and you have a fly swatter. Unjust balance. Your enemy is firing evil arrows and you're chanting the golden rule. Dorothy, we're not kids in Sunday school anymore. We serve a God of balance and God has balanced everything. He's even counted the hairs on your head, at least the ones that are supposed to be there. The sands in the desert, the stars in the heavenlies. And don't you think God knows how many evil arrows the devil has and how many he's going to have and where they are and who they're going to be aimed at? And he also knows that sometimes we don't know any of that stuff. Sometimes we don't know anything. But God knows the amounts of everything, the timing of everything. He knows everything and he's a God of balance and justice. Furthermore, he is not planning that anything bad should happen to you or me. He has plans of a future for us. Amen. So he has plans of a future for us and he's not going to let anything happen to us. Thank you, Lord. God is a God of justice. He believes in justice. I mean, if we sin, there's the law of sin and death. These laws automatically come into play. The law of sin and death is for sinners. So until we repent. And then hopefully we don't sin anymore so we don't have to be under the law of sin and death. Death, But Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Thank you, Lord. So then how are sinners supposed to be rewarded for sin if we're not rewarded for sin? If for sin we get death, how do sinners get prayers with us blessing them? What we learned in Sunday school. Dorothy. So whether the sin is against us or whether it's against other sinners, somehow the reward is not a blessing. Somebody fires evil arrows at you, you're going to bless them? No, return to sender. And that's empowering them if we're going to bless them. Empowering them to keep on being able to hurt you. Really? And it's also forming an ungodly alliance, an evil alliance. God says don't do that. It's forming an evil contract. It's giving your grace away to evil and to sin and to the devil, casting pearls to swine, lipstick on the same. Woe to all those who call evil good, who don't call it out at all. Woe to them as well. And some of you may say, oh, we're supposed to let the wheat grow with the chaff. But if the chaff is unopposed, unchecked, you may end up with no wheat, no harvest, no food for yourself, no marriage, because you know your spouse is going to leave you if you don't have some provision. No family, starvation, and death. No. Return to sender. Evil arrows, return to sender. God doesn't want us overtaken by evil enemies. God says to serve him, and he will fight our battles for us. Yes, vengeance is the Lord's. I am not talking about vengeance, about us enacting vengeance on anybody. Keep listening. Because it says that your enemies will flee from you seven ways, Deuteronomy 28. God is not playing with anybody. God's not playing with enemies. Thank you, Lord. So Satan stands accusing the brethren day and night. And if we've been accused for against something great or greatly accused or often accused, we do have an advocate in Jesus Christ. But we've got to get up to the throne of grace. That is, get into prayer and we have to defend ourselves. We have to plead our cause, plead our case, open up a case before the Lord to defend ourselves against this accuser of the brethren and give Jesus, who is our great advocate, 
something to defend us with. Else, if we say nothing, by our silence, we are in agreement with what the enemy is doing against us. You know, as a kid, if you went to school and your enemy, your, I'm sorry, your bully took your lunch every day and your lunch money and you do nothing about it, you say nothing about it, you might as well just walk up to him when you get to school in the morning and just hand him all your stuff because you're in agreement with it. And the devil is also a bully. Return to sender. All evil arrows, return them. And God is a God of justice. He believes in even scales, justified scales. He hates a false balance and God will fight our battles for us and spiritual issues need spiritual solutions. So we take the accuser to court or he already is trying to hold court by accusing us. So we go to spiritual court. We open up our mouths and we pray. Now, on the other hand, a natural battle may be solved with a natural fight. I mean, if it's raining, you put up an umbrella. You don't send rain back to the sender. Amen. But in the spirit, some things you got to be prepared to do. And you have to be sure that by your silence, you are not receiving evil that's being sent to you. You're not agreeing with evil that's being sent to you. You're not entering into unholy alliances that you're not supposed to be entering into. Hosea 7:15. though I have bound and strengthened their arms, yet do they imagine mischief against me you got to know who you're forming alliances with who you're strengthening who you're edifying who you're building up so they don't turn on you so we've got to know that we are not ignoring signs and arrows and things that are being sent our way to the point that we're doing nothing about it no return to sender and that we don't inadvertently make covenants and get into alliances with people and entities that we're not supposed to be in alliance with. I mean, ladies, if an awful man wanted to marry you and he sent you a gorgeous diamond ring, would you marry him? Of course not. Would you keep the ring? No, because the ring symbolizes your agreement to marry this awful man. Return to sender. Okay, ladies, what if an awful man wanted to marry you and he sent you an ugly diamond ring? Would you marry him? No. Would you keep the ring? No, because it's ugly. Return to sender. Evil arrows are ugly. Evil arrows are not something you should want to keep. And we're going to talk more about why you're supposed to send them back. Okay? Just later on in this message. So if an awful person wanted to marry you, and he sent you an evil arrow to make you or force you or trick you into marrying him, you know, because maybe he impacted your finances by this evil arrow or he impacted your health and you felt vulnerable or helpless or needy or poor or something. And he happened to be an awful but a rich man. Would you marry him? No. Return to sender. The Lord is your healer. Jehovah Rapha. He will heal you. Thank you, Lord. So. People of God, I'm not just picking on the ladies today. What if you found a million dollars that you knew was not yours? It was not for you to keep. Would you keep it? Especially if you knew who it belonged to. No. Okay, what if somebody sent you a million dollars? But you knew that having this million dollars from this person would compromise you. It would compromise your whole entire life. Would you keep it? No. Return to sender. I mean, if somebody put a pile of organic waste material and in your yard, would you accept it? No. Return to sender. Evil arrows. There's no good in it. Evil arrows. Return to sender. Address unknown. No such number. No such phone. Psalms 94, 1. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth. O God, to whom vengeance belongeth. Show thyself. Hallelujah. So God will balance out the deeds of the wicked, but it's not by magic. It's not by just wishing it or thinking on it. You've got responsibility in what happens in your spiritual walk in your life. Psalm 58, 10, the righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance of the Lord. He shall wash his feet in the shed blood, in the blood of the wicked. Let me read that again because I added things to it. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Psalms 58, 10. Evil arrows return to sender. 
And then there are the Goliaths. There are the giants and those that seem to be giants that come against us in life. I call them the Goliaths, those who go and lie in wait to do harm to people, to do mischief to others, children of the devil. I mean, listen, this is a serious ID discovery moment right here. It's premeditated and may even be premedicated evil and it's against you. So this person could be all drugged up or drunk up or just drunk on power or evil. And they're harboring this, all this evil in their heart. And they've been planning what they're going to do to you for a while. And you see, this is why very often when somebody wants a divorce, for instance, their spouse has no idea that it's coming down the pike. And the person who wants the divorce, they've planned it. They've planned it for weeks, for years, for months. And they just spring it on an unsuspecting person. This is what an evil arrow does. It is just sprung on you. Nobody is just going to let you know, oh, I'm getting ready to do this. Not usually, unless they're in some kind of a DC Comics or Marvel movie. And this is why in the natural divorces hurt so much. And there just seems to be so much warfare involved because once somebody has planned all of this evil, but to the other person, it happens suddenly. It's a sudden terror. It's a sudden destruction. It's a sudden change of events. Sudden loss of life, family, house, or lifestyle, I should say. Sudden loss of a relationship, and it hurts. Because that person is a Goliath. They have been lying in wait for a time, a season, weeks, months. Waiting for the right day or month to spring this evil on their spouse like an evil arrow. And usually this Goliath has some lies associated with this too. He's a Goliath in a whole lot of different ways. Evil arrows are like that. And most often they are not expected. That's why they exact such force, such terror, such destruction, such confusion. Return to sender. And the person or the person shooting the arrows at you in this premeditated ID discovery way. I mean... Most often that crime that they want to exact upon another person is capital murder, premeditated murder of something, your lifestyle, your job, your career, your finances, your marriage or something. And that's why the punishment is usually capital punishment. Return to sender. Let God be God. Let God do what God is going to do in this situation. Amen. But in the Bible, there are other laws. There's the law of sow and reap. It's working here. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Return to sender. Whatever a man sows, that's what he's going to reap. And if you roll a stone, it'll roll back on you. A man that digs a pit, he's going to fall into that pit that he dug for somebody else. Deuteronomy 32, 35b, their foot shall slide in due time for the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them will make haste. And a man shall have whatever he says as he thinks in his heart. As this evil person is scheming these evil things in their heart, it's going to come back on them. So a witch, a warlock, a wizard is a sinner because the acts of those entities are sins. Because these people are idolaters. They're devising sin and mischief against others, against other sinners, but also against people who are saved. So we've got to rise up. We have someone who can defend us in Jesus Christ. Sinners don't have anything. They don't have anybody. But maybe they are some sinners who are going to be saved in the future. And if God tells you to stand in the gap for an unsaved person, whether they're your relative or not, that's what you do in Jesus' name. But the scripture says to pray for those who despitefully use you. Well, yeah, that's my prayer. It's return to sender. Okay? But this means that to me, this means God, Father, I agree with what scripture says. I agree with sow and reap. I agree with what you said, that if a man digs a pit, he's going to fall in it. I agree that vengeance is yours. I agree that you've got this well in hand. Return to sender. And doesn't it say in the New Testament that whatever I, whatever I do, it shall be returned to me, pressed down, shaken together, Running over, overflowing. Is that only true for good things or is it also true for bad things? If it's not true for sins or crimes, then what's Deuteronomy 28 about? What are the Ten Commandments about? 
Why do criminals get arrested for crimes? If that's not true, whatever I do, it's going to be returned to me, pressed down, shaken together and running over what I give. Because what they do comes back on them. Father, I agree with your word in Jesus name. Return to sender. Because if that's not true, then everybody should just be walking around handing out flowers and gifts to everybody. And everybody's so happy. I mean, you're handing gifts even to people who are holding guns. Wanting to do bad things with those guns. And this is not happening. And if you tell me where it's happening, then I'm going to know it's a cult and somebody's being forced to do it. I'm not interested in that. So now back to real life. In war, if the army didn't come on the battlefield, but they only stayed home and just prayed, we'd be in for a bad situation. Men and women of our armed forces, thank you for your service. But let's dissect when we're talking about return to sender. Let's dissect the human portion out of any evil attack against us. Let's dissect the human portion out of the attack. Yeah, because we've been hit by incoming artillery and we've got all this time to do that. We got time to sit around with a daisy. They love me. They love me not. They love me. They meant to do this. They accidentally did this. They accidentally sent evil arrows at me. Yeah, we've just got all time, kinds of time for that. No, we don't. This is a battlefield, Dorothy. We're not kids in Sunday school anymore. But we do take the time to pray, Lord, please discern the humanity involved in sending, bombarding me with my life with evil arrows. I can feel the arrows. I can see the results of the arrows in my life. I see the destruction. I see the loss, the hurt, the pain. And, you know, even we want to know who did this in the natural, who's behind all this in the natural. But we know ultimately in the spirit who is behind the attack. The one that comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. So I'm in no way going to pray, oh, Lord, forgive them to the devil. I'm not going to pray, Lord, bless them to the devil. No, I'm not going to ask for the Lord to have mercy on the devil. That goes against everything the Bible says. It goes against what you said in your word, Father. Because the devil will be judged. He will be in prison for a thousand years. And he cannot be redeemed. He's the Lord of the flies, prince of darkness. He's full of evil and I do not pray for him, but against him. But I would pray for the captive or the deceived soul working as a human agent for Satan to promote Satan's plans of stealing, killing and destroying mankind, especially Christians in the name of Jesus. And as for the recruited, enlisted and captive human agents who just don't know any better or those who have chosen evil over good, those who work in the earth against other humans, against other saints of God, even some of them working against the earth itself. I send those arrows back to the pit of hell from where they came. And Lord, you know by what route they came and you know what to do with the human or the humans involved. I commend them to you, Lord. I commend them to Jesus Christ for ministry in the name of Jesus. And we are saints of God. We are the sons of God. And as we are redeemed, we stand in the gap for those who can't pray for themselves. Those who don't pray for themselves. The unsaved. Some are our relatives. Some are complete strangers. We will pray for this whole earth because the earth is waiting for the sons of God to arise. To arise from being doormats. From not being knowing who they are. To arise from doing nothing. As the enemy sends attacks and assaults while the world is going to hell. People are sick and dying and families, communities, neighborhoods, countries are ravished by the works of the enemy while we watch and just wag our heads, wring our hands. What are we doing? We need to rise from looking like weak Christians and from doing nothing and for looking like something or nothing that anybody would want to be. When evil arrows come, that's war. Return to sender. And as a son of God, I agree with God regarding evil and regarding evil attacks in the name of Jesus. And I may not have time to say all of that that I just said on a battlefield with incoming, incoming. But I do have time to say back to sender every evil arrow. I cover you with the blood of Jesus back to sender. And then we are 
in our own country because these countries are made up of these states and neighborhoods and communities and families and households, individuals. And the warfare may start out close to you, grassroots. Sometimes it just starts in a household. There's a household witch. And that witch is identified. And if the household doesn't recognize it or deal with it, it spreads to the neighborhood. And then from the neighborhood to the whole community and so on. Then that evil can link up with other evil and affect states, a whole country, the whole world. It is our responsibility. Return to sender. Because if it's a crime in the natural to aid and abet the enemy, then it's a sin to know to do and not to do anything. In the Jesus name, Jesus overturned the tables on the money changers in the temple. He overturned wrong and sin as soon as he saw it. He spoke against it and he took action against it. Because you see, Jesus, he's not weak and pitiful. He only allowed Judas to betray him because it was the plan of God. He only allowed the Roman soldiers to take him because it was the plan of God for our redemption. Thank you, Lord. Jesus allowed the beating. He could have called angels. He could have called legions of angels to his rescue. He allowed the crucifixion. He gave up his life for us. He gave up the ghost. Part of God's plan for the redemption of man. Because Jesus he already did this. We are not called to be crucified all over again and to be martyrs and just sit around and be attacked by evil arrows. Return to sender. Jesus has already redeemed mankind and he's given us authority to overtake evil and to not be overtaken. We can't just sit and just let ourselves be overtaken and then cry out to God to fix it after we've sat there in real time and just watched it. What is wrong with us? It is not normal for anybody to just watch and allow sickness to take your body into pain and torment and loss and then ask God to fix it. Do something about it as soon as you first know. It's not normal for a farmer to walk through his fields and watch his crops being attacked by, I don't know, bugs or pestilence or something. And then not have any harvest at the end, then ask God to fix that. It's not normal. It's not normal to hear a funny noise in your car engine and just wait for the car to die before you do anything about it. Not normal. We are to possess our body, possess things that we have stewardship over and we're to protect them. And if evil arrows are being sent, return to sender. When Jesus had need of that donkey to ride into Jerusalem on, didn't he go? And tell his disciples to go and ask for it. Yeah. He didn't hijack the donkey. But the thief comes in by other ways than the door. Witchcraft attack. Evil arrows is a way to open up a door. To get into your life. To either put things in your life that shouldn't be there. Or to take things from your life that should be there. Evil arrows return to sender. These are activities of the thief. We know who ultimately is behind them. I mean, in the New Testament, weren't there thieves hanging on the cross with Jesus on either side of him? Wasn't he amongst some thieves? I don't think God likes thieves. If you find something about thieves in the Bible that I don't know, let me know, please. I'm saying return to sender. But so now here we are asking God and we should ask God to separate out the humanity, separate the human agents that are sending the evil arrows against us. And yeah, we can pray for them. I wouldn't linger too long about it. Say your prayer about it. Because that would be the only thing that I would be praying about. Because we know who ultimately is behind an attack. But if that human agent is somehow working for evil. And they've been overtaken. Possessed. Or they're fully involved. Fully immersed in it. They're fully into all evil. Return to sender. If that humanity is oppressed or deceived or captive and they've really not chosen to serve the devil, but they've been tricked, they've been tricked into witchcraft or dark arts, the Lord will judge that. The Lord will weigh the balance. He weighs the hearts to know what will happen to a human being or a human agent as a result of our prayers. We still need to open our mouths and pray. So whether I know who did this or not, who's sending the arrows in, in the human sense, I hold no unforgiveness toward them because unforgiveness is a sin. I hold no bitterness. 
I hold no resentment and I harbor no plans of vengeance in my heart. I'm only stopping the attack. And I am not judging the person, but I'm asking God to judge him. I mean, a trauma surgeon stops the bleeding. The police investigate who caused the bleeding. A lawyer proves why they did or didn't do this bleeding, depends on what side that lawyer is on. And a judge decides the punishment. God is the righteous judge. I am not judging. But I can say return to sender. Stop the bleeding. Return to sender stops the bleeding. It stops the pain in the name of Jesus. And as a prophetic word is received from the Lord, like if you're in a prophetic service, that word needs to be received. Well, on the converse, I reject every evil arrow of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And as I am a son of God, I will not knowingly let that arrow just duck. I won't just duck and let it go by me and possibly hit another innocent person or hit another human bystander because I'm a son of God. I have the authority, the dominion, the position, the knowledge, the warfare, the armor and the words, the sword of God to do something about this. Whereas baby Christian or a sinner has none of that. And if I know to do and I don't do it, then I'm in sin. Return to sender means that I agree with the words of God and I use the weapons that he's given me and I and I take the the weapons out of the hands of the people or the agents who cause evil and hurt and harm to people, people that they want to steal from, kill or destroy in the earth. Because whatever man sows, that's what he's also going to reap seed time and harvest it's gonna happen if you dig a pit you know a pit is a grave you dig it for somebody that man that dug it is gonna fall in it that's what the word says so Dorothy I know you can't teach back to sender to a child because they're not likely walking in the authority they haven't reached the age of accountability they're not mature enough. They're not mature, wise enough or prospered enough in their souls to know how to handle this type of weaponry and to be in this kind of warfare. They could hurt somebody or themselves. They could get hurt. And that's why you don't teach this to kids in Sunday school. But Dorothy, we're not kids in Sunday school anymore. We are grown adult people, warriors of God, and we can wield the weapons of warfare given to us by God. Thank you, Lord. And the word says that every tongue that rises up against you, you will condemn it. Return to sender because an evil arrow is not necessarily a physical arrow. They are curses, word curses, words that are emanating from an evil altar. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, I condemn every evil word spoken against me in my life, against my family, against my marriage, against my destiny, my business, my career, my purpose, my ministry return to sender and you see most often the bible in the bible when a nation was conquered they were forced to serve the idol gods of the conquering nation evil arrows should never be allowed to hit because if you get captured with an evil arrow if you get captured by the enemy your entire christian walk your life your purpose your destiny is at jeopardy because you can't allow yourself to be captured by evil arrows. Else you could end up being in bondage of sickness or captivity or poverty. And you may end up having to go to the enemy that captured you. You may be mistakenly going to the enemy that captured you to ask for release. And that's idolatry. And that is true captivity. Return to sender at the first arrow or at the first arrow that you're aware of in Jesus' name. And God will save those whom he will. So we let the Lord divide humanity from the spiritual evil. We don't bless it. Return to sender. And when God sends you, for instance, to evangelize, you snatch that sinner from the fires, hating even the smell of the smoke that's on them and the smell of the flesh of their garments. And you let the Lord Jesus minister to that person. We may... Send, we may give the word, we may water, but the Lord gives the increase. The Lord saves whom he will save in the name of Jesus. In the meantime, you need to save yourself from being hurt. Return to sender. 
save others from being hurt. Return to sender. Let the Lord choose whom he's going to save. And if they are sent to the Lord and their opportunity to be redeemed or to repent is presented, they have their they have their free will to choose or not to choose. And we'll let the Lord deal with them. And the Lord will deal according to his righteousness in Jesus' name. These are enemies of God and they're enemies of mine. The word says we're to completely destroy the enemy. And it says we're to suffer not a witch to live. Because you know, witches are not entering into heaven. The cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, that's witches, the idolaters, witches, are all liars, and they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. And that's the second death, Revelations 21, 8. Our call is to love what God loves and to hate what God hates. And if the enemy is firing bullets at you and you have a weapon to shoot back, I think you should return to sender. Yeah, pray. Faith without works is dead. Return to sender. Jude 1 and 23. And all others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments, the garment spotted by the flesh. But unrepentant, hardened criminals, criminals against God, God will judge them. The righteous judge will judge. Else, what are all those rules about how to live in a community and how to live with people like in the Old Testament and Exodus and Leviticus? What are they all about? Exodus 22, 1. If a man steals an ox or a sheep and slaughters it or sells it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for sheep. And the thief, when he's found out, must repay seven times, even if his house is decimated. Return to sender. But here's an example in the Old Testament where David did not kill Saul when he had the chance because of the anointing of God was on Saul. And Saul was in a position of authority over David. Saul had been anointed of God, but he wasn't acting like it. But God will judge that. Don't you worry. So not sending back evil arrows is the same as being captive in a war or having all your arrows taken from you, all your weapons have been like taken away or it's the same as being captive like in a me too situation it's the same as being owned being a slave being locked in a bunker somewhere when you've lost or you've yielded your authority and all your weapons not cool so if there's a household witch a church witch work witch do they have authority and anointing of god do they have authority and anointing over you as given to them by God? Do they have anointing to rule over you? Then you do what God says, but must you stay there? It all depends. You do what God says. Do you remember in the Old Testament, Elijah ran from Jezebel and hid in a cave. And this is when the Lord replaced Elijah. He replaced him after that incident. You have weapons, you know to do, and you don't do. That's sin. And would you really like to run from witches all of your life for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? Or would you like to do something about it? Return to sender. Would you like to hide from witches for 10, 20, 30 years of your life or do something about it? Return to sender. Would you like to get hit with arrows for 10, 20, and 30 years of your life? Return to sender. And in the days of John the Baptist, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Matthew eleven twelve, 12. And some of that violence is evil arrows from evil altars return to sender. Witches are very powerful when they're unopposed. Christians are not weak unless they're not doing anything, unless they're not praying, unless they're not saying anything. Else we win. We win in the end. Read the book. But an unopposed anybody is very powerful. An unopposed witch is powerful. An unopposed political candidate is very powerful because they're going to win. And a witch who's sending evil arrows, working evil against you, working evil against your life, is running like a candidate to run your life.
Won't you oppose them? You don't bless them. You oppose them. Return to sender. Exodus 22, 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Deuteronomy 8, 10. There is... There shall not be found among you anyone that makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. Return to sender. Listen, if a known witch brings you an apple, are you going to eat it? If they bring you a cup of beverage, water, juice or something, are you going to drink it? You know they're a witch. Well, if they send you an evil arrow, return to sender. If a known enemy is firing weapons at you, you don't bless them and you help them kill you. Luke 6, Dorothy, this is the stuff we learned in Sunday school. The golden rule, yes, it still applies. But listen, Luke 6, stealing a coat, a cloak, or despitefully using somebody is different than trying to kill them. It's different than trying to uh, destroy their livelihood or their marriage or their family or hurt a member of their family or poison their dog. And I can say with no malice in my heart, I forgive you. But I commend you to my God who will contend with you and who will judge you. And I'm saying to God, I agree with you. I agree with what you will do based on your word because you are the righteous judge. And I return to sender without unforgiveness in my heart, without bitterness, without vengeance, without anger or animosity. And maybe even with a little pity toward the, the person because it's fearful to fall into the hands of the only living God. Hebrews 1031, a terrible thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. Vengeance is the Lord's. Dorothy, we're not kids in Sunday school anymore because there are witches out there. Some of them are pretending to be good witches. No such thing. And there are wizards. They're flying monkeys. They're leprechauns and munchkins and evil trees and evil forests can't believe I ever really watched that show. I mean, there's so much evil depicted in it. And there we were as kids being told that none of it's true. It's make-believe. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. Maybe most of it may not be visible to the natural eye, but it's real. Keep on living. I mean, the scarecrow's mind and intellect have been stolen. Evil arrows. The tin man's heart have been taken. Evil arrows. Dorothy was lost in a forest. Dreaming. That is a dreaming that is a classic sign of witchcraft attack and soul captivity. The lion had no courage. These are classic signs of the devil stealing the virtues of man, stealing the virtues of people to make them the things that make you the very person that you are, that the Lord has given you so you'll be successful in your life. Being stolen, evil arrows return to sender. And that holy water being thrown on that green witch and she just melted Dorothy we're not in Sunday school anymore we're not children anymore and we can be trusted with power with authority we are past the age of accountability we know right from wrong and we have enough soul prosperity as not to abuse authority and power God entrusts us with power with the sword of the, his word the sword of God Jesus could have called legions and we have the authority to put at least a thousand angels to flight and we put in those angels to flight with our words and what do they do well they do what the word of God says they do what our voice says as we, as we give voice to the word of God but it has to agree with the word of God we are not be, being biblically incorrect we are not being unscriptural because no angel of God is going to do anything against the word of God anyway, based on whatever we say, whether we say it on purpose or in error, no angel of God. We have to make sure that we're not sending out the dark angels out to do any evil things, though. We have to know the word of God back to sender, sow and reap, seed time and harvest, stone rolling back. It's all scriptural. And God will contend with those who contend with you. God has the ultimate say so. He's not going to do something just because you said it. And invoking evil is entirely different than deflecting evil. It's completely different. Return to sender. Idolaters. Return to sender. Psalm 109, 17 through 19. As he loved cursing, so let it come upon him. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he clothed himself with cursing, like as with a garment, so let it come into his bowels like water and like oil into his bones. King James Version. Return to sender. His mischief shall return upon his own head and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. This is his head. Psalm 7, 
15. Yay, all that vengeance, it's going to come back on the sender. But it's not magic, Dorothy. It's by the voice of the word of God, return to sender. Because out of the abundance of our own heart, the mouth will speak. So let God be the righteous judge of any man's heart. And I'm not planning to get killed by any evil arrows, return to sender. And I'm not sitting still to let my family get hurt by evil arrows. Return to sender. I'm not letting things that I have stewardship over be taken by evil arrows. Back to sender. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. He wouldn't have given us armor if we weren't also supposed to do some warfare. It's not a costume. It's not for war reenactments. It's for real life. The shield of faith to quench the fiery darts. And the arrows are bigger than darts. Vengeance is the Lord's. To me belongeth vengeance, the Lord says. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time for the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them make haste. Deuteronomy 32, 35, Psalms 149, 7. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment among the people. So the problem with vengeance with man, I believe, is... Man does not know how much vengeance is the right amount of vengeance, how much recompense is the right amount to pay back. But God does because man most often will go overboard. Yeah, he does. That's what witchcraft is. Witchcraft is, I don't know, maybe a small slight, maybe no slight at all or perceived hurt. And this person might take out a cannon, a cannon full of evil arrows to shoot at the perceived perpetrator of sad slight. Back to sender. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing. And he was clad with the zeal as a cloak. Isaiah 59, 17. There is no enchantment against us. Therefore, we have no responsibility to receive evil arrows. There are no enchantments against Jacob. And I refuse to receive them in Jesus' name. So as the devil is before the throne of God accusing us, then we must also take him to court. But O Lord of hosts that tries the righteous and seest the reins of the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee I have opened my cause. And how will the Lord be able to exact vengeance if we don't agree with God's word regarding vengeance? I agree with that. Jeremiah 51, 36. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will plead thy cause and take vengeance for thee. And I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. But nothing will happen if we do nothing. If we say nothing. If we do nothing, we get nothing. If we ask nothing, we get nothing. And we have if we ask not or we ask wrong or we ask for the wrong reasons. Do I want to perish? No, not in Jesus' name. Psalms 94, 1, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs, O God, to whom vengeance belongs, show thyself, return to sender. Your voice gives the heaven something to do, gives them their marching orders for warfare on your behalf. But if you say nothing, nothing happens. Yes, Lord, the human agents save them if they want to be saved. But right now, I'm planning to live and not die in the name of Jesus. And the enemy comes in like a flood and the Lord raises up a standard against them. Yeah, flood, you know, pray that the waters that will, will push back. You do something about these waters that may be overflowing. Oh, even if you get in a canoe, you take a, an, an oar. And what do you do? You row. And what are you doing? You're pushing the water back back to cinder if there's a fire you spray water on it isn't that what you're doing you're trying to push the fire back and ultimately put it out return to cinder you want it to be destroyed disintegrated dismantled and never used again this arrow because we are sons of god and when we become sons of god by our when in our doing we do what god does we do what god says to lord i agree with your word let your angels have charge over me, protecting me in the name of Jesus. And the word says we're going to see the downfall of our enemies. And in this armor of light, this armor of God that God has given to us, 
these weapons of warfare that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We watch, we pray, garments of vengeance, cloak of zeal, weapons in, from the armory of God. What are they for? They're so we can do warfare, do battle, return the evil that's been sent against me. Lord, give the humanity involved an opportunity for salvation if they have not used up all their opportunities, if they've not been turned over to reprobate, return to sender. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes for his, this his device against Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Jeremiah 51, 11. And as for all spiritual wickedness, utterly destroy it, it says, or send it to the abyss, Lord, for early torment, locked in fetters and irons that have no keys, chains and ropes that can't be broken, and spiritual zip ties that cannot be undone, claiming failed mission in the name of Jesus. Father, utterly annihilate their altars, every error return to sender, at least sevenfold, maybe more. But if the devil's camp, I'm telling you, the violent take it by force, if the devil's camp doesn't feel some incoming, if they don't see that you're going to fight back, if they don't feel a hit, will they ever stop? Because once started, these evil altars, they're pretty much automatic unless we stop them. They're automatic into generations, not just in your life, not just this week of your life. They don't wish that you would have just a bad year, but into your generations. Houses and families and bloodlines with no salvation, no prayer, no praise, no worship. It's as though they don't have a roof over their head to protect them from the enemy. And the enemy just attacks them at will. But not us. We are saved and in the kingdom of God. We are not fodder for the devil. We have spiritual covering. And yet the evil arrows still try to come at us. Return to sender. Now. I mean, if we're really declaring war on the evil arrows that are sent to us. We actually be saying more than return to sender. There'd be Holy Ghost fire, thunder hammer of God. And we pray that they be discomfited by the lightnings of God, tormented, double torments, double thunder, Holy Ghost grenades, even more weapons of warfare. And they would be sent against the spiritual evil that sent the evil against us in the name of Jesus. But Lord, if a human agent is, is involved, and of course they need a human agent because they don't have bodies, they're spirits. So without a body, nobody can do anything in the earth, good or bad, or without agreement with that body, cooperation from a human being. So if this human agent, if they're still being used, and if they're being used as a human shield, and we look and say, oh, there's a human over there. I don't think I'm gonna send this arrow back. Well, Lord, I read in the Bible that when Abraham was trying to make a deal with you about whether or not you would destroy a city, Sodom and Gomorrah, you said, hey, if you can find 10, I won't destroy it. We're talking about one and we're not even talking about one good. We're talking about one human. They could be a bad human. Let God be the righteous judge. Could be an unrepentant, reprobate human. Let God be the judge. incoming evil arrows return to sender and I'm not going to just turn over in my bed and keep sleeping I'm not I'm either going to get up and I'm going to do some spiritual warfare or you know what I'll start the warfare right there before I ever get out of bed because Dorothy it's not by magic I will open my mouth and I'll put voice to the word of God return to sender I forgive them but back to sender Psalm 99 8 Thou answerest them, O Lord, our God. Thou wast a God that forgavest them, though thou tookest vengeance on their inventions. Back to sender. An evil arrow is an invention. And for those who want to keep sinning, for those who want to keep being heathens, Psalms 149.7, God will execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Thank you, Lord, for this message. In Jesus' name, amen.